Yeah, I'm ready to move on if you are. Yeah, I'm good. Cool. So I'm ready to move on to Saudi Arabia, the dark horses of the group. Watch out for their late run. Um, yeah, no disagreements for me. No, I'm lying. <laughs> um, they qualified as winning the Group B in the AFC third round qualification. Uh, they're the 51st ranked team in the world. That's got to be one of the lowest that we've talked about so far, isn't it? I saw something today. They're the third lowest ranked team in the That's World Cup. Wild. Um, they are entering their sixth finals, however, looking to get past the round of 16 for the first time ever. Uh, Harvey Renard leading their group, the Frenchman. Um, I, I think it's safe to say that they have a pretty large hill to climb going against some of the best countries in the world and Mexico. Nice. <laughs> how they do? How they do in their last five? So in their last five, they got a win against Australia. Um, oh, I should I should preface this by saying I think there were two friendlies that they've played super recently, but I could not find like any information no on lineup on or anything, up. so I didn't include them in this case. Um, got a one zero win against Australia, one zero loss against Colombia. 1-0 loss against Venezuela, 1-1 draw against Ecuador, and a 0-0 draw against the U.S. Way, uh, what a game. Yeah. Uh, I stayed up all day for that one. You and probably everybody else who's a USMNT fan. Um, rankings, we got Australia at 38, Colombia at 17, Venezuela at 57, Ecuador at 44, and U.S. at 16. So, it reminds me a bit of Ecuador's form coming in i mean they have scored two goals in the last five games yep um probably a bit worrisome but i, I think they'll, they'll they'll rely more on a park the bus and counter system than anything else um i just i can't imagine them thinking they're going to be expansive and playing attacking football against argentina <laughs> right <laughs> If I'm going up against Argentina, my my idea is not, hey guys, let's go ahead and try and try and possess a roundup today. Let's go get them. Let's get out of them. No way. Sit your ass, sit your ass in shot. front of the <laughs> sit your ass in front of the eighteen. Block every shot that comes in, and if we get a counter, let's run. Um, key players were a lot of fun because I know none of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so I'm highlighting to start, um, Fahad Al Muwala from Al Shabab Club. When I looked up all of their players that were on their roster from the 2022 year, calendar year, uh, he did have the highest goal total and the most caps. Um, he's got 17 goals, uh, and he will split the scoring responsibilities with somebody I'm sure we'll talk about after uh, on the left wing because there's really not a true number goal scoring number nine, um, at least not that I could find. So that is one person to watch for this team, I believe. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. This was uh, not the easiest to pick top players. Uh, one guy that I did put on my list was... Um, wait, can you say, say yours again? I just want to make sure I don't have the same one here. Bahad al Muwalad. Okay. Uh, I went with Salim al Dasari. There you go. Um, he plays for Al-Hilal. He's got a, a 6.95 rating right now for the for the club, four goals, one assist, and four appearances. Uh, I believe he plays on the left wing. From what I was understanding, it was kind of like consensus that he was one of their top players. Uh, he had se seven goals and one assist in World Cup qualifying and, and 13 appearances. I think that's probably pretty strong for them. Uh, and in friendlies against Venezuela and Ecuador, he had uh, two assists. So I think he's going to be an important uh, part of their attack. And that's probably the honestly, it's probably the best I've got. This was not an easy one. Fun fact Al Halal was where Sebastian G Giovinco played. Uh, Luciano Vieto played there, or, or currently plays there, excuse me. Um, Batafembi Gomis used to play there. Uh, Carrillo is over there. Musa Marega is over there. Uh, this club's got a, got a couple of attackers that are. Pretty interesting to note. Um, I did note their right back, 
Sultan Al Ghannam simply because he was the highest market value. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> um, he has played his entire career in the Saudi League and has made 15 appearances for his country. Uh, my guess is he'll be involved in a lot of the defense and not so much of the attack, but he's got high market value, which means obviously best player on the team. Yeah, We're and a- you can't even say it's like prem like markup value because everybody's in the same league. So right, right. Um, so apologies for anybody who's really looking forward to us highlighting some key players for the Saudi Arabian team. Um, go Google it. I don't know. <laughs> I've got, I've got, um, I've got one more, and then one. I guess like, uh, honor- I'll call it honorable mention. But go ahead. Um, I think he's actually probably one of their top players. Uh, I just hadn't done research on him ahead of time, so I don't have much to add. But uh, I was, from what I was understanding, Yasser Al Sharani is uh, one of their top players as well, left back for them. So highlighting both fullbacks, definitely going to be key in this group for them. So uh, definitely wanted to highlight him. And then the last one that I had was their striker. Um, Faraz Al Barak Barakin Barakin. Um, he also plays in the Saudi League for Al Fateh. He's got a six nine six rating so far this season for the club. Only one goal though in eight appearances. In qualifying, he had three goals, no assists, and twelve appearances, uh, and no goals or assists in friendlies. So doesn't sound like he's coming in in the best form, but from what I remember, I think he is like. Uh, one of the better scorers for Saudi Arabia, and he's still pretty young too. So I, I think he's going to be like a young up and comer that's going to be a factor in this team for a while. And I think this will be a good chance for him to like really make his mark on the on a big stage here for for the team. So I threw him on there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I had kind of alluded to that earlier. Is he he's up and coming, but he's not in great form. Uh, you know, that's why. Mualad and and Dalsari are going to be taking most of the uh, goal scoring responsibilities is the word I'll use because he just he doesn't get the job done and and for whatever reason is I mean I remember watching against the United States but I don't think you I don't think you see a lot of goals out of this club I think you see a lot of one zero zero zeros for a reason. They know who they are. They know their identity, and they're going to try and nick a point here and there and see if they can mess up the group and see what happens. Now, I think Argentina runs over them. I think Mexico and Poland will struggle to break them down. Uh, Poland more specifically than Mexico, I do think, Uh, simply for their lack of attacking creativity, right? You've got Big Robert Lewandowski in the middle. We'll talk about this later, but you got big Robert Lewandowski in the middle who you're going to try and play off of. They're going to put four players around him and make you go play out wide and hope that they can win headers off of services. They're going to be a tough team to break down. This is not going to be a team that's going to show up and be like San Marino and get beat 9 nothing every game. They're going to compete. So, um, Predicted 11 for me. Uh, I've got Al Owais in goal. I should make you do this. I did the tough names last time. Um, I got Al Owais at the goalkeeper spot. From right to left in the center back spot, I got Al Ganam, Al Amri, Al Oleahi, Oleahi, and Al Sharani. In the midfield two in front of them, I've got Kano and Al Faraj. In the three pack in front of them, I've got Al Mualad, Al Hassan, and Al Dawarsi. And up top, I've got Al Baraika. That was all right. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got almost the exact same thing. I I just have one, I think, difference. Um, I actually have a different shape, too. I went with like a 4 3 3 instead of a 4 right, then go three, go one. from Go from back to front, then. I don't need to go back to front. It's, the, it's yes, all the do. same except one player. It's for the TikTok. You no. have to do it for the TikTok. Do it for the you, content. You just want me to read the names. That's it. That's all you want. Do it for the content. Muhammad Alawais Al- in goal. Sultan Al-Ghanam at right back. 
uh, Abdulela Al Amri at center back with uh, Ali Al Bolea Bola Bole Boleahi <laughs> at the other center back. This is I know this is what you wanted. Um, Yasser Al Sharani at left back, a midfield three of Sami Al Najai Naji. Uh, okay, yeah, I remember him. Salman Al Faraj and Mohamed Kanu. Uh, and then a front three of Fahad Al Mu uh Fahad Al Muwalid, uh Salem Al Dosari, and Faraz Al Buraikan. So pretty much so exactly I, the I, same, except for the one guy. Sure. So I did actually need you to do that because I've been editing the TikToks. If you haven't checked out our TikTok, go look at them. They're really cool. We put all these all these clips that we're making, cut them up, we put them out there. Go check it out, like it up, follow up. We're at 157 followers on there. I post like once a week. Pretty Massive. cool. Um, but it's it's always good to run through because what I was noticing is when we just go like, oh yeah, I changed this, 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 and this. It's kind of hard to follow. So it's good to to see it. My question for you, much like Qatar, a team of all home league players. They all play in the Saudi league. Do they have the ability to withstand the different styles of play that are coming in and go shot for shot with any other country in this group in Mexico? Yes. 100%. Um, I think it's going to be very difficult, but let's not forget that this team finished first in their World Cup, World Cup qualifying group that had Japan and Australia in it. Those are not two teams wow. to sleep on. That's that right. is a that is a tough group, and they finished on top. Um, recent form says they're not in the best form. They're struggling to score goals. They've been pretty solid defensively, but uh, I I really think that the the team knows who they are. They have really good chemistry with one another. They're not just relying on one superstar. You know, everybody's going to contribute. I think teams, if teams sleep on them, it's going to be a big mistake. And I think Saudi Arabia will make them pay for that. Uh, whether or not teams do end up sleeping on them, I don't think that they will. But if someone shows up and is not playing at their best, I think they could take advantage. I think they could cause some chaos in this group. I love it. I love a little bit of chaos. You know that I'm here for that. Of course. And I agree with you. I agree with you. I think... Uh... Like I mentioned before, they know who they are. They know what their game plan is. And if they can go in and nick a point here and there, they're going to mess some people up. I don't know if it means that they can get out, but they certainly will not be blown out. So keep an eye on the Saudi team. Yes, absolutely.